YouTube and welcome back to our 14th 3DS Max tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be going through the process of designing a shield the reason for the shield is because I'm doing a college project at um, my college which I need to design weaponry and stuff so shields and we can also use it for our unity series so um, I've got this shield here I'm not going to be using it identically but um, easiest way we're going to do it is trace it, cap it, extrude it Extrude it well, I extrude it backwards, and that'll be pretty much it. So, I've downloaded the image and I've got it, it here, as you can see. And what we're going to do is if you right click it, if I put it down here, right click and choose properties at the bottom. I don't know where it is on a Mac. If you go to a details, you can see the dimensions are fill 450 by 450. So, if you go to your 3D Max and create a plane in front view. Set the length segments to 1 and 1, so it's just one solid plane image. And set the position to 0, 0, 0. And then set the length to the height of the image, which is 450. And then the width to 450. You'll get an image, or a plane the exact same size as your image, so it won't be distorted. So if you press M on your keyboard and drag a nice um, our shield to the material view, and then you can just assign it to the actual plane. So now we've got an image which is in 3D marks, which we can basically trace, which is really cool. So if we right click it and choose object properties, what you want to do is untick frozen in grey. And what this does is allow you to right click it and choose freeze and it won't grey it out. Whereas if I were to do it to say this box here and assign the image to it, and if you freeze it, it'll go grey, which is not what you want. So, right click, um, uh, choose frozen and grey, yeah. So, we've got this, and the best way we're going to do this is to press G in our front view to get rid of the grid, and choose wireframe, and then choose shaded, we can see what we're looking at. So if you press Alt and W, I think it's the same on a Mac, you can zoom in, and then we can begin tracing it. Now there are many ways you can trace it, planes, boxes, la la la. I'm just going to use my shapes tool. So I'm going to click shapes on the next tab and click line. And all I'm going to do is at the bottom click, drag and pretty much try and trace it as neat as possible. You can use curves if you like or whatever. I'm just going to do it by line, by hand line. Keep the polygon count down. So all I'm going to do is trace it. And you can see it's slowly growing the selection box around it and just keep slowly tracing it. I'm not making a really really good job it is but you could spend hours doing it. Make sure you click on the last spleen when you're done and click close spleen yes. So now what we do is if you um, right click off of it so, so you're not selecting on anything you can click your I think it's not letting me I've clicked freeze, haven't I? Yes. So, Alt W out of that, and I've gone into perspective mode. Hide my shield, and there's the outline of the shield for now. So, what we can do is if we go to the modifier tab and click modifier list and click face extrude by pressing F, you see that we get our thing here. So, then again, we can go modifier list, editable poly, add it on top, press your 4 key for polygon. Click the top of it, scroll down and click extrude. So you see at the moment we've got zero zero, let's drag it out and we have a big thick, thick shield. So I'm just going to set it to 10, it's a little thin, 15, there we go. So we have our basic shield for now. As you can see the back end is not very good. So what we're going to do is go back up to the top, click our border, select the border around it so all of that and we'll just find down and click cap there we go so we have one solid full shield perfect so right click unhide all let's bring our shield back and if you click on your shield what you've designed and press alt and x you make it temporarily invisible so we can just see through it and because it's fuzzy we can't really see it we'll take realistic and shaded because then we can see it a bit better so now what we need to do is pretty much brevel inwards and then extrude outwards. So the best way, because if you look at it, it just traces it, is for us to just take it out. So Alt X, if we right click, 
clone and choose copy that's fine what we can do is if we go to our scale tool and instead of 100 try 80 and we'll just drag it outwards a bit so we can see it not that way that way just so we can see where it is yeah, I think that's perfect where it is so what we can do is if we do extrude it out and just like we did before we can um, and we only want to take it out of one edge so what we can do is click in it when we get it right this might be a good time to use your wireframe here in there and what I'm going to do is just before it reaches the edge I'm going to click our main shield in fact I'm going to change the colour of it first so you can see that will do so I click our back shield go to modif not modify list there, apologies your geometry and we'll choose compound pro boolean start picking and pick this one away so if you press F4 on your keyboard you'll be able to get a much better look this colour is awful is there a better one? there we go you can see that we now have extruded it inwards if we hide this just like the image so if extrude it inwards all what's left now is to put a pattern on it which is not very or hard I mean so we can just pretty much do that without showing it so we'll keep it hid go to our shapes line again back to front view and trace this image you can of course put whatever image you want I'm going to use this sign just to make it more realistic If you want the whole, you, I'll show you how to do the whole, but I don't really want to do it. But hey, make it as mo realistic as possible, hey? If you want these to be identical, you c can clone it, but I'm not going to do that. I believe I've showed symmetry before. slowly trace it I'm trying to trace it fast enough but that it'll look okay and not bad but then again to save time and close the spleen yep perfect so same procedure again oh delete that we don't need that click our background image hide it select our object face extrude, add, add an editable poly, click the front, come to perspective, extrude it out a little bit, say 5, is 5 enough? No, I say 10. I'll do. So, go to the back, border select, 3, fill your shortcut, and cap. Perfect. So, if we right click unhide all, it's partially nearly done. We can select our background and choose hide. Click off the border, hide. And this is a little bit big, but I actually prefer it like that to be fair. So I'm going to keep it like that. Yeah, so that's in there. Is it touching the back? I believe it is. Yep, so that one's that nearly done. Um, for the people who wanted the holes, um, the best way would be to, which you press F4 on this, go to your s geometry, standard, and choose cylinder. And if you just zoom in, and where every single place it does here, just drag a little cylinder out and drag it up. And then just drag this every place you want it, so there, there. The way down to there and this final one across to here holding shift to copy click shift and click so we'll select our cross and um, hide the background image first oh uh, from F to go to front select our background shield get rid of that well hide go to compound objects pro boolean start picking pick That's it, so we've got our four holes as you can see. If you right click, unhide, um, and we're just going to delete this background image now because that's another. In fact, we'll hide it because we do need that. 
But as you can see, we've got the holes in there. Got a shield. All what's left is to stop that because that will be annoying. So we just slowly, tinyly drag it in just so you can't see it. That. So that's that. You still can't tell it's off. Look. Um. Now what we're going to do is add our. Well, we're going to drag this outwards just so we can see it. If you look at it, we have pretty much points, three points for every corner, and then just random points going down. So if we do put this back where it was, hide our cross because we don't need that. And I believe we don't need the in ends of it. Okay, apparently we do. So click this, right click, object properties, and visibility will set to 0 0.6. There we go, we can see it, but still see through it to see where the points are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to here and choose sphere. I'm going to use a sphere. Go to our front view, select this, and, well, I'll just do it here, slightly inner. The reason I'm using a sphere is because if you look at the image, it looks like they are, they are rounded. So what we can do is if we just pretty much leave it like that, so it's just sticking out a little bit. Say if we change the colour to pitch black. You'll see it stand out on the object. So what we can do is we go to our front view. And now all we have to do is clone it every single time. Which is quite tedious. So we'll go around. and just clone it I'm not making this look perfectly neat but because we've made that inner th thicker it's not going to be the same this one will be here this one will be here and this bottom one will be here so again we can copy them all Freeze this background selection because, yeah, so we can see. Drag it across. Yep, holding shift to copy it. Grab these two. Drag it across. Good thing is about this is if we don't like it, we can always just pull it apart and change it. Same, same with this. Drag it across. Paste it in. Some people may ask, is this pulling up the poly count? Yeah, it is, but because there are only spheres, basic shapes, it won't really matter. Um, so we can drag this across. In fact, that was fine where it was. Select these two, drag them up again. I'll drag this one in a little bit. And same with this one. Stick them on the corners, just because they like being on the corners. Uh, I'm going to neaten this one up a little bit. I do. Drag it to the point. Drag this one to the point. And finally, we've got three left. So, point, point, and finally, point. You could make them all the same height and everything. I'm really not going to. Unhide, hide our background image, click this, or this unfreeze them. Unfreeze. Let's have a look. Slowly get in there, it's that way. That's the back. If we select our shield, object properties, set the visibility to one. As you can see we can't see our nubs because they're on the back. So what we're gonna do is we'll just press Control A to select all, or Command A on a Mac. Hold Alt and click on the objects you don't want to select, and then we're just going to drag it out to the front. That should do. As you can see, we have our shield. Um, it's quite big compared to what we usually do, but all what's left will be to texture it. So I'm just going to make the actual background shield greyish. Make the cross bright red and make the nubs on it, uh, I don't know, white. 
here. Press F4. You can see a shield. Get in the right light. Press if you go to rendering and choose render. That's what it looks like as a rendered shield. So as you can see, there's our basic shield. It didn't take very long. I don't know how long it's been, but um, I hope it's worked. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Um, this will what we'll do another tutorial is make the arm stuff for it so it's not bland. But yeah, so don't forget to save it and see you next time. Hello YouTube.